I am uh, Dr. Camillus Kasala of the Eastern Africa Statistical Training Center. Oh, okay. I have followed Professor Lumumba's presentation. I would like to submit to us that this, what I'm going to say, will be the summary of his presentation, very short. There is no hygiene in African politics because of what I call the not always vicious circle. This circle begins with what is logical in African politics is not always practical. What is practical is not always right. What is right is not always ethical. What is ethical is not always desired. And what is desired takes us back to what is not always logical. <laughs> now, what is the hygiene? Mwalimu Nyerere avoided what I call temptations of five Ps. And I would like the young people here to listen very, very carefully. Because the world today is everywhere broadcasting these five P temptations. Please, future African leaders, the young people, avoid the first P. Avoid being the victim of the first P. The first P is power. Avoid being the victim of the second P, property. Avoid being the victim of the third P, prestige. Avoid being the victim of the fourth P, popularity. And avoid being the victim of the last P, pomposity. Waswaili wanaitwa wanaita mbwe mbwe. Mzie puke hizo zote. Asante sana. Thank you very much. Naitwa nikiwa pili ni msani wa rap. Duri sana. Lakini kwangu mimi nasema ukombozi wa Afrika hautaletwa na mesaya, masi. Hata ukiwa soma kina mwalimu, kina kabrala, kina sankara, waleogopa sana hiyo dhana ya umasi. Ambo sisi wote tunayabudu. Lodo tumejia kwa sabu ya nakuja profesa Lumumba. Ni zana ya umasi. Hakuna wakulima hapa wamekuja kutuwa mada. Hau nduwa naishu umasikini kila siku. Hakuna wakonda, hakuna wapigadebe. Kuna hiyo hairak ya kuhodhi marifa. Sisi wasomi ndo tutaongea. Wale wanyonge tumewacha. Kwa hiyo kuangu mimi inataka kukazia kwa mba. Mapinduzi pekee ambayo ya taikomboa Afrika, kwaza ni kuvunja uo mfumo mzima wa uchumi. Na kubadilisha mfumo, kama mwalimu alivuta kubadilisha mfumo, turudishe nguvu kwa wananchi. Tukumbuke mapinduzi ya Afrika ilipigwenewa na wananchi, lakini viongozi walipokuja kuyashika na kukaa kwenye wamikutano, waliwalagai na kuwauza wananchi. Tunatengeza taasisi, taasisi lakini mwalimu alisema taasisi za demokrasia. Kwa sababu nzakua ni taasisi lakini ni chombo cha 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 ubepari. Kwa hiyo kwangu mimi naungana na profesa kwamba tumeona viongozi wachafu lakini mfumo unawa place unawapa fursa za kuwa wachafu. Kwa hiyo lazima tuelewe mfumo mzima wanafanyaje kazi na tools zake ni zipi. Mimi naogopa sana hizo lugha za taasisi, equality kwa sababu wakoloni ni lugha zao hizo. Katiba na kila kitu. Kwa mimi narudi kwa sababu iliyomfanya Sankara Kawawa eh, akawawa hani wa South Africa akawawa lipumba kwa sababu walitaka kubadili mfumo wa kiuchumi na ni lazima uanze na dira kubwa kama mwalimu alibalisha elimu alibalisha siasa na kila kitu kutengeneza mfumo mpya kama ambavyo wazungu walivutoka kwenye ukabaila kwenda kwenye ubepari waliua mfumo mzima wa ubepari kwa kama tunataka turudi lazima tuue mfumo mzima wa unyonyaji na tools zake zote tutengeneze mfumo mpya ndio tutaweza kutoka lakini hizi lugha za katiba na hizo ni lugha za rasmi when i listen to you who is an artist 
and I know you are either below 30 or below 35, I was refreshed. The former president of Sierra Leone, whom I did not like for many things, but I liked him for one thing, he said <laughs> that in Africa, a journalist with a pen in his hand is like a warrior with an AK-47. He can use it to protect or to destroy. Africa is a fragile continent. What Europe and America can withstand having gone through different decades of civilization and civil wars, sometimes the multi-ethnic African communities cannot survive. The artists in Africa must be a lot more careful. You must use the tweets a lot more carefully. You must use the Facebook a lot more carefully. You must use all those mediums a lot more carefully because in recent history, we have seen the radio being used to cause genocide in Rwanda. So you, the artist, remember what Shakespeare said. Oh, you giant, oh, you lion, you have the powers of a giant, but use it carefully because he who is powerful must know how to use the power. So you African artists, you must choose what to say and what not to say. In other words, without compromising your freedom, you must choose what to say. Just like when you are reporting on our leadership. And lastly, I want to talk to young Africans. I see young Africans here. Professor Mlama, the VC, the DVC, Mzewa Ryoba have done their bit. This is a relay race. The question is, and I know that there are Christians here, if you look at the Bible, there is a man called Simon. When he had been told that Christ has been born, he said, now I can die, because I know Christ has been born. Can this generation say that of you, that now they can die? Can we leave Tanzania in your hands? Will it be safe? Or you will want to make it the 52nd state of the United States? <laughs> that is the question. And even those of you who are from the Muslims, many Muslims here will know the great Hadith writings of Abu Huraira. When the Prophet had been poisoned and he was dying, the comfort of the Prophet is that he had his Sahabas. You who are here, are these your Swahabas? Will they sell us to Europe and America? The question is yours. Choose you now. The Chinese have chosen. They are coming here. And they will be here. There is a phone that I acquired recently called the Techno. In the next five years, out of every... Ten phones, nine will be techno. China knows what it wants. Do we? We are 1.3 billion. Do we know what we want since you are Africa? How in the words of Nyerere, tunabaki kushangana kuduatu. I know it can uh, Tanzania, when one talks about hygiene, one must start in the 1960s. One must remember the Arusha Declaration and the nobility of the intentions of Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere. And that is why many of you may not know, but at one time it was suggested that he be made a saint of the Catholic Church. And the reason was very simple. This was a man who had ideas. This was a man who had clarity of thought. This was a man who could see the future almost with the exactitude of a Jewish prophet. This was a man who had the humility almost like the humility of the carpenter of Nazareth. This was a man who loved his country. He made mistakes and when he made them, he realized and corrected them. That is his greatness. Is it not Saint Just who said that nobody can rule guiltlessly? This is a man 
who found 120 plus ethnic groups and welded them into one niche. So the Tanzanians speak with one voice. You know, if you look at Tanzania and you ask your typical Tanzanian, what was the ethnic extraction of President Kambarage Nyerere? They do not know and they do not care. If you ask Tanzanians what was the ethnic extraction of the second president of Tanzania, Mze Ali Hassan Mwinyi, the Tanzanians do not know and they do not care because it does not matter. If you ask them what was the ethnic extraction of the third president of Tanzania, Benjamin William Mkapa, they do not know and it does not matter and they do not care. And if you ask Tanzania what was the ethnic extraction of your fourth president, Jakaya Amrisho Kikwete, they do not know and they do not care. And if you ask them what is the extraction of your fifth president, John Pombe Magufuli, they do not know and they do not care. They only know that he's a bulldozer. But you go to my country, Kenya, God save my country. <laughs> God save my country. When you meet your typical Kenyan and you introduce yourself as John, they'll ask for the second name, not that mean they may know your full names, but that they may identify you with your ethnicity and pigeonhole you accordingly. <laughs> when you go into that country, which is a great country in prospect, but which is being destroyed by negative ethnicity, you ask them who the first president of Kenya was, they'll tell you it was Jomo Kenyatta and he was Kikuyu and we care, we want our Kikuyu president. <laughs> And if you ask them who was the second president, they'll tell you it was Daniel Arab Moy of the Kalenjin extraction, and we cared because it was our turn to eat. <laughs> and if you ask them who was the third president, they'll tell you it is Uhuru Mwigai Kenyatta, and he is a Kikuyu, and we want him to continue because we Kikuyus and we Kalenjin only feel safe when one of our own is in state house. And if you ask the opposition and you ask the leaders, you ask the leaders from my own ethnic group, the Luo of Kenya, the Luo will tell you we have been marginalized for too long. The time has come that God must smile upon us and our son must be the president. And if you ask the Luhias, they'll say the same thing. That is the tragedy of gigantic proportion. I'm submitting to us that the country called Kenya needs political hygiene. I'm submitting to us that the country called Kenya needs to come to Tanzania here on a benchmarking tour and that the president of the Republic of Kenya and all our parliamentarians should sit at the state house and be lectured by John Pompe Magufuli on the finer points of governance. Of course, Mzee Warioba will be there. <laughs> and other stalwarts will be there. Salim Ahmed Salim will be there. Great Tanzanians will be there. And Nyerere will remind us Katika Karne, Ya Ishrini Namoja, Tupande, Basi, Ya Makabila, Ujinga, Na Upumbaf. Because it can destroy a nation. There is need for political hygiene in Kenya. Right now in...